Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning. There's a lot to talk about apparently this morning. It is wonderful to see you here this morning and it's such a delight to have you in worship. Thanks to those who are worshiping with us online. We are delighted that you are joining us for worship today. Um, if you looked at your bulletin, you notice we have a different organist today. So not to put you in the spotlight, but I just want to extend grace right now because uh, Robin is uh, our organist today. And if she misses something, we're all going to just blame me for not giving her better directions. So uh, it's hard with liturgy and uh, learning together, learning what the head signs, hand signs, flagging people down between an organist and a preacher. So a little grace there. In our text today, we hear in Deuteronomy that God promises to raise up a prophet like Moses who will speak for God. In Psalm 111, God shows that people shows the people the power of God's work. For the church, these are ways of pointing to the unique authority people sensed in Jesus' actions and words. We encounter that authority in God's word around which we gather, the word that prevails over any lesser spirit that would claim power over us, freeing us to follow Jesus. In that freedom, we can come to worship. We come knowing that we can confess our sins and do indeed receive that forgiveness. As you are able, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of the darkness and light, word of truth, the wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts to your worship. We have known you, but we have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn, 595, or you may know the words already, Jesus loves me.
Let us join together in the prayer of the day as printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe in your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our compassion that all creation will see and know your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our scripture reading. <laughs> the first reading is from Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 20. Today's reading is part of a longer description course in Deuteronomy, an updating of the law for the Israelite community as the people wait to enter the Promised Land. Here Moses assures the people that God will continue to guide them through prophets who will proclaim the divine word. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord, your God, as Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see his great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet <coughs> shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes, presumes to speak in my name <coughs> the word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The Lord of the word. For the word of the Lord. <laughs> the word of the Lord. <laughs> Our psalm is from 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are your works, O Lord. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds. And your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you. Remember me forever in your providence. You have shown your people the power of your works. In giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithful and justice. All of your peace are true. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy God, to your name. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. All the grass is the sand of the rest of the hand. God's grace is the truth The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 13. Paul is concerned about the way some <laughs> Corinthian Christians use their freedom in Christ as license to engage in non-Christian behavior that sets a damaging example to other impressionable believers. Christians have a responsibility to each other and their behavior does not cause another to sin. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as, we, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we, 
are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better, better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of the idol may not, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please stand. Each hand. You won't want one? 
You can eat them in church. You want a donut? No. Eat it? You can have, you can have both. One fruit? No. Do you want a donut? Yes. And for the other person who comes up front to sit. <laughs> How often do you guys get to eat in church? Not that often, right? Sometimes we have fruit snacks or goldfish, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes we create rules in church, and some rules are good, like be quiet and listen, because those rules help us worship God. Sometimes there's other rules that they say that you have to follow in worship, like no coffee or eating donuts in church. But I'm going to eat a donut in church. Here at Wyland, you can have some donuts too. Paul wrote a letter to the people in a city in Corinth about they were wondering about if they could eat the food in their church, in the synagogues or in other temples. Yeah, Paul was saying that if you're eating that food and it's causing other people to have a hard time to believe in God, then maybe you shouldn't do that. But for us, sometimes we create rules that make it really hard to believe in God. You have to be this way, act a certain way. You have to follow rules, but it makes it really hard. Is following God sometimes hard? Yeah, it can be. Is sitting still in church really hard? Yeah, is keeping your hands to yourself and not touching your sister in church really hard? Not for you. You must be the well. Haley, you are a well-behaved child. <laughs> Paul says, though, sometimes rules are good. Sometimes we do things. So it is helpful for other people. But when it's not helpful for us, or it's causing harm for other people, we shouldn't do that, right? We want to be helpful, right? <clears throat> yeah. Shake your head. Yes. We want to be helpful. Yes. Not you. Okay. Can you guys be really helpful today? Can you do something that helps your mom or dad today? Yes? That wasn't very confident. What's something you can do to be helpful for your mom and dad? Um, help clean the laundry. Help clean the laundry? Oh boy, your mom's lucky. Do the dishes. Do the dishes? Oh, you promised you said it out loud, so can you help with that? Yeah? All right. I think it would help your Sunday school teachers. Those of you who are going to Sunday school, Finish your snack and walk tiptoe to Sunday school. Tiptoe. Yep. I can make a snowman. Don't you can make them. Can you eat them before Sunday school? Oh my God. Okay, you can hand them to your mom and your mom can eat them. All right. Lexi, did you want? How often do you get permission to eat donuts during the middle of church? Not often. And you missed your chance because you didn't come up for the children's sermon. Like I was trying to tell the kids, sometimes those rules that we put in place, we talk about them now. Like when we were kids, we had to do this. We had to sit our parents, or we sat with our kids in the second row of church. And now you moved yourself to the back row. I know some of you who have told that story. Oh, why do we put so many rules before us? Sometimes we did those things for our kids because it really did help them learn to worship God and be faithful and help encourage them in their faith. Now is the challenge when that isn't your primary role anymore. How do you continue to act and follow different things as a believer that helps keep you 
believing and following your faith. Because sometimes when we remove those rules, remove those guidelines that we put in place, that can cause us to stumble. We think we no longer have to sit in the second row because we don't have kids anymore. We can sit in the back row. We can start to disappear. We don't have to attend to every Sunday. Ooh, those are some challenging words. But that's what Paul is talking about, about the people in Corinth, finding that balance between what is faithful living, especially in a society that isn't Christian. How can you keep the faith? And how are your actions affecting others in keeping their faith? Well, that's not where I'm going with my sermon at all, but I just wanted to follow up from the children's sermon and give myself a little um, credit for bringing donuts in church again. When we live in different parts of the world, we're gonna experience this gospel text a little bit differently. Living our lives a little bit different, we're going to experience this gospel and read it a little bit differently. Your viewpoint or worldview is shaped by the context around you. I think a big challenge of living now is that with Halloween movies, Creating when Hollywood creates these apocalyptic movies or horror movies about the power of evil, and that either evil seems that far fetched and ridiculous to us, or the power to stand against evil with authority seems to be only for the few people. Only the few people who have those superpowers, who are blessed, who have a special authority can defeat evil. That's what Hollywood tries to tell us. But how do we live with this dramatic story of exorcism from the first century in our modern technological 21st century world? Reverend Dr. Paul Berge says, whether in the first century world of a healing in the synagogue in Capernaum or in a gathering of worship today, the kingdom of God the reign and rule of God's power and authority is manifested in Jesus Christ. We too have been rescued from evil one and restored in our right minds through the lordship of the crucified and risen Christ. Okay, so what does this mean for us? Evil hasn't disappeared. Evil hasn't gone away since the first century when this story was taking place. Everything isn't restored until Christ returns again. So it's kind of confusing for us then to believe that this evil has since disappeared. And while we don't encounter this evil in this form as told in this gospel every day, we still encounter evil in the world, in the actions of others, our own actions, addictions, diseases. And here in Mark's version of the good news, Jesus is quick to prove in his earthly ministry that evil has no power over us. It's why we can pray the Lord's Prayer and deliver us from evil with confidence. Martin Luther says in his explanation of this petition of the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil. He says, this short petition is nevertheless directed against specific evils that emanate from the devil's kingdom and may befall us. Poverty, dishonor, death, and in short, all the wretched miseries and heartaches of which there are so innumerably many on the earth. Therefore, we have the ongoing task on earth, and that is to pray constantly against this arch enemy. Freedom from evil changes everything. It's freedom from what wants to control your life. Freedom break from evil breaks you away from a destructive path. And that freedom comes from Jesus' authority and his power over heavens and earth. The evil spoke in this gospel and recognized Jesus' authority and power over them. Jesus spoke and controlled the spirit to come out of the man. And the witnesses saw Jesus' authority and were able to testify. 
The scribes teaching in the synagogue didn't even speak with authority, but the people were able to recognize that there was authority in Jesus' words and teachings and his actions in freeing this man from the Spirit. In the ending of the Gospel of Matthew, that at last chapter 28, Jesus says, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. There is power and authority coming from Jesus. The power and authority from the heavens and earth, dominion over all, power and authority that can only come from the Creator and the Redeemer. We are not left without, though. In baptism, we are claimed as co-heirs with Christ, redeemed by his death and resurrection, and given power by the Holy Spirit. If we believe that Jesus healed and cast out spirits then, then we can believe that it can still and does still happen now. When we are taught that prayer of the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil, we are taught to pray with that authority, that power that Jesus has over everything. And we end that prayer with amen, meaning may it be so. May it be so that we are delivered from the evils that try to captivate us from the evils that try to draw us away from worshiping God, those small acts that build up and up and up, those large acts that cause harm to our neighbor, cause others to draw away from God. When we continue to pray, deliver us from evil, from the powers of evil that really drag us down, that cause us to fall into addiction, those diseases that run rampant, deliver us from evil. Amen and amen. May it be so. Let's say that together. May it be so. Amen. <clears throat> Let us sing together our hymn of the day, 614.
In response to the gospel, the Christ has power over the heavens and the earth. Of all that seems to want to control us, we proclaim our faith together. Please stand as you are able. We proclaim our faith today in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in the Lord God. Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of my name, of one being with the Father, through me all things living. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was a part of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and he came to the living For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in the words of the scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And you will not be in the glory of the church of the living and the dead, and the kingdom of God on the earth. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped to glorify God, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Catholic Southern Church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sin. We look at the resurrection today and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds your church up in love. Give us all the confidence to be people who proclaim your word here in this place and outside the walls of this building. God of grace. Renewing God, we pray for all creation, that waterways flow with clean and clear water, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth, God of grace. Just as speaking, God, we pray for those in the government and community leadership that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. God of grace. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who have known rejection and who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any who suffer. We especially pray for those listed in our prayers. For Sheila, Roberta, Colleen, Noreen, Kathy, Richard, Sandy, Mark, Jerry, Glenn, those who are having surgery, and the family and friends of Idris. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with our neighbor. I'm trapped. <laughs> our offering and have a few announcements announcements that are in your bulletin things that are coming up read those uh, you can do offering <laughs> we can um, read those announcements and uh, they're taking orders for the Super Bowl subs uh, get those in. If you are watching us online, you can call in and get those or find someone who has an order form. Uh, 
uh, Lenten suppers are just around the corner. If you have a group that could help serve with a Lenten supper, or you just want to grab a couple people and serve, you can certainly do that. Read the other things that are happening in our, your bulletin. Uh, ignore the calendar for the upcoming week. We're not having another annual meeting <laughs> that's listed in there. Uh, we had that last week. Um, so instead, this week's calendar, quilting is happening at some point. Sue, what day is quilting happening? Starting Tuesday. Starting Tuesday is quilting is happening. And we also need help bringing up quilting supplies because we moved it for the funeral. So if you are an able-bodied person who can walk up a few steps and hold a, while holding a box, you are needed after church to help out the quilters. If you fall into that cr the criteria of being able to carry a box up some steps, you are needed. That's quite a few of you, so. <laughs> Uh, yes, the, the quilting supplies is in the archives room, and we just want to move it up here. Uh, so that was requested by the quilters to announce that and make it clear you can help. There is, there is confirmation this week, and there is also a nursing home worship service this week also. Any announcements I may have forgotten or need to highlight? Not seeing anyone shout one out? Well, if I miss something, please tell each other during coffee hour. They would appreciate it. Let us stand and receive our offering. should not give way to your own brilliant light. And so with the choir of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this in remembrance of me. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. forgiven, you are welcomed at this table to go out, be fed, and go out into the world. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
your heavenly Father God, and the Holy Spirit. by the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior. We lift up this prayer, giver of every gift. Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to be life beyond by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Here believe that this blessing is most certainly for you. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn 434. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Amen.